Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury on the Elite Broadcasting Channel. Today guys, an exclusive, I want to talk to you about the, the Rolex situation, the Rolex situation. Now, if you're not a wristwatch person, wristwatch check, I'm wearing my two-tone Rolex Daytona. Let me explain what the situation is. Basically, with Rolex, um, the... Demand for certain models of Rolex far exceeds the supply. And basically what's happened is the Rolex sports lines, that's things like the Submariner, the GMT, the uh, Explorers, any of the sports Rolexes, which traditionally are in steel, are highly, highly wanted. Now, this is an interesting situation because normally, if they're highly, highly wanted, the business would put the price up. But see, Rolex is not a normal business. They're actually a charitable trust. So Rolex can't manipulate the prices like a normal business would. Uh, it's, and we've got the situation now where basically what's happened is, I mean, <coughs> wristwatches, automatic wristwatches were basically a dying thing. In the 70s when Quartz was out there, wristwatches would have, could have, could have gone the way of encyclopedias where now you just Google it. But for some strange reason, mechanical wristwatches have really flourished these businesses have reinvented themselves now what's happened now is um tastes have drastically changed just like in the uh 80s 90s people really wanted a saloon car now the favored vehicle is the suv They've become road warriors, even though they may not take this SUV off the dirt. They have become, <laughs> become, they're into the sports genre. Same thing with wristwatches. Um, it's that, the sporting accent. So, society's casualized a lot. We, we, we used to wear a lot more ties and jackets and that's kind of, it's kind of lessened. It's lessened a lot. Um, and what has happened is the sports wristwatches, we've got markets like China. China has, uh, they used to be a closed market. They, they were behind the iron curtain, so to speak. They were, under, they were communists. They weren't manufacturing. Suddenly they've, they've, they've opened up and you've got a, a, a becoming middle class who desperately wants status and they want Rolex. They want Rolex. So all of a sudden, the demand worldwide for certain models of Rolex has exploded. What does this mean? Well, what it means is it's like any situation, whether it's a the Mazda Miata, when it was launched, it was selling way over sticker. Uh, basically, yes, on the secondary market, these pieces are selling way, way, way over sticker price. Now this creates a problem because many of the authorized dealers of Rolex, they have to spend huge money to be a Rolex dealer. They need to have a certain caliber of store, i.e. prestigious expensive rent. They need to put so much money into advertising. You, you see those full page ads in the 
magazines, yes, Rolex gets the ADs to pay for that. It's not free. So it's a very difficult situation. If you are selling a product, which is, um, say, the, the, the Rolex, the steel version of this, maybe, you know, 10,000 US dollars. And the market is saying 20,000 US dollars, you're going to have problems. Now, in Australia itself, we've got some serious situations happening because you've got so many tourists from overseas coming in and they hit the Rolex boutiques. Any steel sports, any steel sports, any steel sports. They will just buy everything at retail. And this is the problem, is that if the dealer is not careful, he will end up being completely sold out of the desirable models and the less desirable models he'll be stuck with. Now, if you take a look around the world, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, any country for that matter, you will find most Rolex dealers have a huge stock of Datejust and two-tone steel and gold Datejust uh, and solid gold because they are the more expensive model. They also tend to be the more... Uh, they're, they're kind of... There's a lot of demand for Datejust, but the sports is what the collector... See, the collector doesn't buy one. A normal person may buy a Rolex, they, they buy a two-tone Datejust. They'll buy one, maybe one for the wife, two. A crazy collector will buy five to ten of the buggers, 20 of the buggers, as many as he can put on his credit card. And this is what's happened. The collector market has exploded. Absolutely exploded. What does it mean? The collector market has absolutely exploded. Well, it means that supply is greater than demand. Now, what have I seen firsthand through my own eyes? Well, I can tell you, I was in Singapore and I saw, I was at an AD. Actually, this was Dave's, my, my mate saw this. And basically you had a situation where a Chinese, I don't, I think he was mainland Chinese. He basically bought a big cube of steel Rolexes. They weren't all steel sports. They were Datejust, Oyster Perpetuals, some sports in there. There'd been Submariners, there'd be GMTs, Explorers, maybe a Daytona. His invoice, basically 12 pages long. A brick of money was used to transact this. And uh, there's nothing illegal in selling a big chunk of stock to anyone. There's, n there's n nothing illegal in that. It makes it very hard. Now, in China themselves, they, do they not have Rolex dealers? Yes, they do. But because of the taxes and other charges, China is one of the most expensive places to buy Rolex. There you go, you've got the incentive for everyone who travels to buy Rolex, bring it back and make a profit. Capitalism at its greatest. Now that the situation is, is that this situation is so, so bad, many people have a waiting list. You could go on to a list <coughs> to get a hard to get model. Very long waiting list indeed. Um, this waiting list situation is a very, very, um, that's, that's, that's how it, how it is. It's very tough. It's very, very 
tough. So I got to be honest with you. I got to be completely, completely honest with you when I say it's encouraged some sort of its situation. You've got dealers who are getting in limited stock. What do they do now? They're a little bit tied as well because my understanding is Rolex doesn't want the dealers to sell them over the recommended retail prices. So what happens in this market? And that's a very tricky thing. Sometimes the incentive is for legitimate dealers to set up a sister business, a grey market, meaning a non-authorised outlet, to sell this stock at higher prices, at the market price. Now, this is very tricky to police because what happens is you might have an owner of, a, of an AD, then his wife or his brother or his son would start this little sub-business. Now it gets tricky because you, you've got to really um, do these guys get it from their sister business or not. It's very, very tricky, very confusing situation. And you can see why there's huge incentive. If a product that sells for 10000 actually is worth 20 in the market. There's huge incentive to try and get the 20 instead of the 10. And, and this, is, this is the big problem itself there. Um, another, another situation is, is um, that I've, I've seen is that, you know, they may start a private group whether it's a facebook group or a, a even on something like whatsapp you could have a private group and you can try and get higher prices for this stock now this is the situation from people i've spoken to rolex is supplying stock it's how the ADs manage that stock. And obviously, you know, an AD who's had a long relationship with somebody would want to give that stock to their good customers to keep their customers happy. However, there are some people who you, you could understand why a dealer may be encouraged to sort of set up a brother, a sister, or wife in a side business to try and maximize the profits. It's a very tricky situation, and the Rolex supply situation doesn't seem like it's going to get better. In fact, it's probably going to get much, much worse. It's a situation the collector market wants the sports models. Now, that's not to say the non-sports models, non-sports being day date, date just, Oyster Perpetual are bad watches. In fact, they're basically the same watch. But the collector enthusiast, he really wants the sports lineup. And this is the whole problem. It's created this, this artificial bubble which could go bang at any time. Now, I kind of think the problem is when things are... People, the psychology of people is very strange. They like to think that when somebody wants something, more people want. People want what they can't have. If it's available, they don't really want it. 
It's kind of the weird psychology. We want what we can't have. Uh, it's kind of one of these <laughs> universal dilemmas. And I've seen it with people, fans, collectors, myself. I've seen it with my friends who have want a model just because everyone else wants it. I, I try to myself. I try myself. I must admit, I, everybody is victim of this. I remember many years ago, I had a Patek Quartz. And I thought, no, I'm going to be strong. I'm going to keep it because it's a, it's a high quality watch. It's very accurate. It's a beautiful piece. And I succumbed to the pressure of the peer group. Why would you buy a Patek Quartz? And anyone who knew what a Patek was would say, why would you buy a Quartz? Anyone who knew what a Quartz, you know, anyone who said, yeah, Quartz is a great thing, didn't know what Patek was. It was kind of a, a dilemma. The Rolex situation is very severe. It's severe. It's a very, 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 very serious problem. I tend to think, you know, uh, Rolex themselves are producing stock. They don't want to over flood the market. They, they, they just, Rolex is very, very conservative, very, very traditional company. They, they want to be careful. They want to be careful. They're careful. And I kind of think myself there, um, they, they kind of, they're, they're produced, they're, they're supplying, they're just kind of standing back. They're kind of, see, they're not the distribution network, they're the, the manufacturer. So they kind of, they're kind of staying back a bit. It's market driven. That's what it is. It's market driven. This is what it is. Market driven is driving those prices up. The funny thing is, you know, you look at Rolex. 20 years ago, a sophisticated collector would have bought IWC, would have bought Pam. Panerai was that market. Panerai dropped the ball. Uh, these people have moved Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. And the interesting thing is Rolex is not a normal business. They're a charitable trust. So Rolex, unlike Panerai, which did some stupid things like bringing out too many limited editions and bringing out non-core watches, i.e. dive watches, which were only 30 meters, stupid things like that. Rolex probably won't fuck it up like that. So the Rolex supply situation, how do I see it going? I think it's going to get tighter. It's going to get tighter until the Chinese change their taste. They inevitably will. They inevitably will. The longest, the biggest, the, the longest running luxury market in the world is Japan. Japan's tastes have changed. However, still very strong. Rolex, 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 Rolex sentiment there. I kind of think this is the new normal. This is the new normal. Um, I I think this is the, the times that we live in, the new normal. And um, I, I think um, get used to it. This of Rolex sports is very hard to get, very hard to get. And um, situation normal, all fucked up. I'm Archie Luxury. This has been an exclusive for Elite Broadcasting. The Rolex situation explained. Guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and please put some comments below. Good, bad, or indifferent, put some comments down below. I'm here to talk to my audience. See you later. Oh. Hey Archie Luxury fans, if you're into luxury, then you gotta be into 66 Buick Rivieras. Check out my son and I, Alex, as we restore this beautiful 66 Buick.
Neighbors are having a picnic, you know, having fun and stuff. Me, I'm doing cars. It's what I've done my whole life. From the creators of the Archie Luxury, the Paul Pluter and the Archie Luxury Corporate Channel comes something very special and appetizing. Elite Broadcasting, Elite Broadcasting, heavy hitting journalism, now powered by the Archie Luxury Media Group. Please stay tuned for Elite Broadcasting. 120,000 subscribers can't be wrong. Oops, yes, we used to be Elite NWO, but we had to rename when the left wing got nasty. They got nasty that we were telling the truth. Elite Broadcasting invites free speech, free speech, free speech for all. Elite Broadcasting, powered by the Archie Luxury Media Group. <laughs>